Bulabinaka, Malolele, Talofalava to all the Pacific Island Food Revolution family out there sitting in the Pacific leading up to Christmas. And all of you would have seen there's a real trend going towards plant based eating. And what's, I think it's part of a larger consciousness, a, a positive food consciousness that's emerging in the Pacific, partly through the COVID experience. I think that there's a lot of local food suddenly being celebrated in every, each and every country. And certainly Pacific Island Food Revolution, we're really happy to be a part of that movement um, at the moment. And you'll find there's lots of food definitions have come up. There's vegetarianism, there's being a vegan, there's pescatarian, there's plant-based. And all of it's interesting. Some of it's a bit mystifying. What I want to say about Pacific Island Food Revolution, we are not advocating advocating for any particular one way of eating, but we do want to promote eating more vegetables. That is undeniably the way to lead a more nutritious life. The Pacific is the Garden of Eden of vegetables. There's no doubt about that. And something that's been really revealed through the COVID experience is that the backyard and the local markets, people are looking at them and saying, wow, look at what we've got. So to that end, we've invited three plant-based Pacific people to talk about their way of eating, their way of living. The first one is Dora Rossi, Chef Dora Rossi, Samoa's Nigella, as we call her. You'll all know her because she's the, she's the co-host of um, for Samoa for Pacific Island Food Revolution. Dora is a restaurateur. She has been plant-based for the past year. She's got really wonderful insights. Our next guest is the gorgeous Roshni Pal from Fiji. You will have seen Roshni in Pacific Island Food Revolution, Fiji episode two at the table in the orange with the flashing eyes and the wonderful insights around, around plant eating in the Indo-Fijian context. And this is part of a whole way of life for Roshni. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about that with Roshni. Our third guest is from the land of the unexpected, the unbelievable Papua New Guinea, somewhere I went to for the first time last year. And I was like, why haven't I lived here my whole life? It's such an incredible country. And I met Debono Paraka there. Debono is a Commonwealth Games athlete. He has become a food star in Papua New Guinea. For, and his thing in, in Port Moresby is a, a plant-based pop-ups, which have become the social event in Port Moresby. So really welcome to you all. I'd like to start with you, Dora. Just a bit of a preamble before we start with each one of you. I think that the the kind of impetus towards eating plant-based often comes from three different perspectives, three different motivations. One is climate change. People are understanding that the more plants we eat, the better we are contributing to the climate change solution space. Another one is animal welfare. People just don't like cruelty to animals. I know for me, that's a personal mo- motivator in terms of reducing my meat intake. And then the third one is nutrition. The more vegetables you eat, the better you, your nutritional diversity and intake is. Dora Rossi, the oh, beautiful uh, co-host from Samoa. <laughs> Tell us a little I bit really- about, how are you doing, first of all, Dora? I'm good, darling. How are you? Good, good, good. Always amazing to see you, of course. Tell me a little bit about oh, your you. plant-based journey. Plant-based is obviously eating plants. So that's the simplest of the kind of diet definitions. Tell us about your story. Well, my story. I, uh, I started about a, over a year ago. I, I wanted to challenge myself. I just noticed that I just couldn't get through my steak anymore. And to tell you the truth, I used to be a huge meat eater. I would eat meat at lunchtime and at dinner time. I just wanted to challenge myself to see if uh, my body would feel the effect of not eating so much meat. And I just couldn't get through my steak. And I challenged myself for six weeks and I stopped eating meat altogether. And I actually loved it so much that after six weeks, I noticed that my skin was clearer, my digestive system was happier, I was less moody. Um, and so I decided to 
tried the vegan diet, tried the plant-based diet. So I actually eliminated eggs and dairy as well. And I have never looked back. And it's been over a year now that I've, uh, I haven't eaten any Great. meat or eggs or dairy. And I really, really, I don't think I'm ever going to go back. Tell you the wow. Truth. I'm just really happy. And, yeah. Well, first of all, a little round of applause for Dora's one year anniversary. <laughs> Dora, Dora, you are half Samoan, half Italian. Now, from the Samoan side of yes, cuisine, Damn. we know that coconut really is that got that lovely fullness that we often miss when we move away from oh, meat yeah. and dairy but what about your parmesan cheese space how have you filled that in what what oh. do you crave that still <laughs> no i don't i don't have any cravings actually because i find that i can i can find everything i need and even i don't really have a sweet tooth but i can satisfy uh my 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 wanting something sweet with um the natural sweetness of in fruits and vegetables. And there's, uh, and there's ways you can actually bring that sweetness to light. And to, my recipe today is all about that. Actually, mm. I'm doing a dessert today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a dessert recipe that I've put together and um, using the natural sweetness of, of fruit. Fruit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love your Instagram mm -hmm. posts and. Um, Anyone who doesn't follow Dora on Instagram, her Instagram handle is sitting beneath her right now. You are such an amazing cake maker. And I think that when people think of going to a diet that where there's some sort of restriction, like not eating meat, you give up all the good stuff. But you are evidence that that is actually, it's the opposite. You, you're taking on the good stuff. Yeah, I'm taking it. It's all good. And I'm, I really love being plant-based. And a lot of people ask me, how do you, how do you work in a restaurant? How do you uh, be in a kitchen, work as a chef and not want to eat everything um, that comes under your nose? And I just don't feel the craving for it. I'm really quite satisfied with uh, my plant-based diet. And Dora, That's you not have a lie. Right, right. You've got two restaurants <laughs> or more. Are you noticing this with your customer base? Is there a change in views yes. towards, yeah? Yes, a lot of people are actually curious um, I have created a few plant-based um, dishes at the cafe and at the restaurant, and um, I'm doing a green banana salad with coconut cream and tofu for the plant-based eaters and chicken for the people who do not want to um, have the plant-based dish. And I've managed to get into a gym as well, a CrossFit gym, and people are ordering uh, online, and it's and yeah, people are really satisfied and they they want to try. Um, right. They want to try the dishes, which is a, a beginning. I guess you've got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, quite a few people are sticking with it. So. And what would you say, Dora, is the biggest misconception about plant-based eating from the meat-based perspective? What's the biggest thing that they just got wrong? Uh, without a doubt, uh, it's uh, where do you get your protein from? Do you get enough mm -hmm. protein? Uh, you know, as you know, the human body needs protein to build muscle and, and other important uh, things that happen in our body. And I get all my protein from plants. In fact, uh, after about eight months of being plant-based, I got a full blood um, analysis and my B12 was great and everything was perfect. <laughs> right. Yeah, so right. all my, it, yeah, so I'm, I'm quite healthy and um still kicking and I've been working out. I work out every day, nearly every day at CrossFit. So I still have the strength. I have um, the stamina and I don't, um, I'm not missing anything. So yeah, I, I, my family actually, uh, when I started being plant-based, eating plant-based, uh, my dad, especially my dad's Italian would um, give me grief, say, oh, eat a steak, have a steak. You cannot not eat meat. And I said, dad, I don't really feel like it. And after about six months, he, he shut up. He didn't say anything anymore because he could see that I was healthy and I was happy and I'm, you know, really thriving. So great misconception is, you know, you do not eat meat. You do not need meat to yeah. right, right. function well as a human being. At a, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Dora. Roshni, turning to you, you have a life of, of eating plants, correct? 
It's been a That's whole of life. You, you didn't stop eating meat to become plant-based. Uh, well, uh, as a child, as a child, I was finicky about eating anything bloody. Mm. Uh, so I was one of those children. Um, we ate meat, but I used to be opposite to what children generally are. They'd eat, the, eat their meat and leave out the veggies. I would eat my veggies and leave out the meat. I used to right, be, right. Yeah, so I was that sort of uh, person. Then, um, but I gravitated towards uh, um, ve a vegetarian diet all that most of my life. Yes. However, because I was uh, finicky about blood, I used to eat more of um, the seafood, except fish. I didn't. So what would you eat? So I did crabs and prawns mostly, and who can afford crabs and prawns all the time? It was always a luxury food. Mm. You know, and um, what do you call those big uh, prawns? Lobsters. Oh, those, yes. Yeah. You don't yeah. even know what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> I forget because I haven't been eating them for ages now. That's right. So That's right. Um, when I met my husband, being a, a Muslim, mm. they love their meat. They like the freshest, uh, best meats you can get. So uh, when I met him, he could not convert me to eating meat. <laughs> right. Converted him to eating more vegetables. Oh, <laughs> I was going to ask you, yeah. How, yeah. how did you manage that within your marriage? But it sounds like you won out. <laughs> well, he uh, it was mutual, like mutual understanding. So he could eat whatever he wanted, but I included a lot of veggies. And, and of course, you know, in the Fiji context, um, people would understand that Indians have always had a meat dish as well as a lot of vegetables. Mm. So it, even in households now, you will see meat plus veggies, um, except for the culture of going out now and a lot of you know, takeout foods and all that, like chojis and all that. Yeah, but yeah. we've always had that. So, yeah. Um, so but you've always I had a good ratio of, of a lot of vegetables with a bit of meat kind of thing. That's right. Culturally. Culturally, I think, yes. The yeah. only difference for an Indian vegetarian and a vegan, I would like to point out, mm. that um, from my perspective, what I've seen is that um, uh, Indians, because of uh, religious uh, traditions, they will always have uh, the ghee and milk as part of the tradition, because milk is supposed to be, you know, used a lot religiously and mm. ghee used religiously uh, uh, in ceremonies, I mean. So, uh, and uh, milk is, uh, you know, how Indians revere cows traditionally yes. and religiously. So that, that aspect. So everything out of milk and milk products, so it, that becomes uh, yogurt, cheese, and everything else that the vegans don't eat. The uh, an Indian vegetarian would eat, right? Would not still would not eat um, fish or eggs or anything like that. So vegetable plus milk and milk products, you can say. That's and so, do, what is, is that? What you eat now? Is that your diet now? Um. Well, uh, since uh, the last ten years, you can say I've tried to gravitate towards veganism. Mm. five say because uh, I've tended to retain weight and I wanted to see whether cutting out dairy and dairy products would help and I see that it does make a difference right a difference. I've never had skin issues but it does make a difference to the general well-being and digestion yes right mm. totally vegetarian uh, the past two decades or more right right I used to eat a bit of meat but Two decades. Got it. Yeah. And, and Roshni, th this is part of a whole belief system of yours. I mean, it's not just what you eat. It's also you're a member of the Art of Living Foundation, which is about yoga and meditation and a, really a whole lifestyle around consciousness That's, in every sense. Can you elaborate that, a little bit on that and, see, and tell us yes. how that fits within that framework for you? Okay. In the yogic culture, um, 
while well, it's it's a holistic well-being culture, right? In the the people misunderstand it as just hatha yoga Exercise. physical exercises. Mm. So the Western world, of course, has taken it and made it into a billion-dollar industry without the other aspects of yoga. So yoga includes meditation, food. Food is a very important part of yoga. So. Uh, in the yogic culture, it is believed there are certain foods that give you that raise your energy levels and give you um, um, a good health, give you good thoughts, clean thoughts, not violent thoughts. Even they even say that you know to eat uh, meat, a lot of meat because they have been killed violently. You also drive that violent um, trait. You absorb it. You absorb it. Yeah. yeah. You absorb it. So that sort of a belief is there. So yes, I promote, like you can say, a holistic health and wellness, which includes how food is prepared, when it is eaten, how it is eaten, and as well as exercise, yoga, meditation. So Got it. Whole, um, the life. whole system. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And and Rashi, what about your children? Did, are you, did your children grow up vegetarian or... How did that how, how did that play out? Well, because uh, it was an interfaith marriage and there was no compunction on any side, the children grew up naturally eating everything that we both ate. So they had meats and and vegetables. However, they tended to eat just chicken and fish. Mm -hmm. Although the father, of course, ate beef. Um, it was mostly chicken and fish. But they also, when it was school functions, it's a funny thing is they would always opt for vegetarian things because they didn't like how the meats were prepared outside of home. Got it. As cook. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what about now? Now, the last 10 years, I've just asked them how long they've been be, uh, vegetarians and be, almost vegans. Um, last 10 years, as they went away, uh, they were born away, but they were brought up in Fiji. Then they've left when they were 18, and now it's been already, already like 10 years and 12 years for the older one. Um, the older one, interestingly, she still ate, um, she became a pescatarian. Okay, after, which uh, means eating fish. For reasons. Yes, yeah. she, she just, she told me that she imagined how the animals were killed, and she just didn't bring herself to eat. Then, and she mm. then uh, met uh, her boyfriend, her partner now, who, funnily, is totally vegetarian. He's totally, but he, he never forced her, we never forced her. She uh, automatically gravitated towards um, uh, totally being vegetarian in the last five to seven years. Mm. She can, and she says she doesn't miss it uh, and doesn't crave anything. The younger mm. one has been vegetarian the last 10 years for ethical reasons, climate change, and you know how the children now are so aware of what's happening. Yeah. yeah so thank God, so, thank God for that. And and yes. the fact that these yeah. issues fold into our future choices so effortlessly. It's a space that we can all be climate change activists through food. We can Absolutely. engage with the larger issues through the foods that we that we choose to eat and the all the consumer choices we make. But specifically, eating is something we do every day. That's every right. day. So and animal it is production. Yeah, animal product, you know, animal um, industry, meat industry mm. is one of the major contributors. For 15 to, percent of all uh, greenhouse. Yes, to, yeah. Um, yes. And also the inefficiencies um, around the fact that it takes three kilos of grain to create one to kilo of animal kilo, protein. Yeah, and that's so right. it doesn't make sense. Doesn't make uh, sense at all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you, Roshni. Uh, De Bono. Yes, we've got so, our you. You are a manly man, and men yeah. are all about meat. The the equation of meat and manliness is embedded into our societal psyche. Talk to me about your journey because you're a you're an athlete. You're a bodybuilder. You know, a lot you. of your journey is actually around physicality. Athlete. Yes, absolutely. So I am an athlete first and foremost, and then that set me on my my journey now into the culinary world. So being a being an athlete, you have to be for my sport specifically, which is throwing events. Uh, you have to be big and strong. And uh, I got to a stage where I was overly 
too too big. So that that prompted me. It was actually after the Samoa Pacific Games mm. uh, that prompted me to take a look at my lifestyle choices and how I was taking care of my body and then make that change happen. So the, the, the pinnacle, the most uh, important thing I focused on was my nutrition. So that's straightforward. I just knew that that is what would get me the results I wanted. And I limited my consumption of protein was the biggest change, animal protein. Mm. And then it's just me been going for about a year and a half now, my transformation. So I've lost like 35 kilos plus wow. of ex- extra weight. So that is a big, that's a big portion, but wow. it, it's more the excess weight. It, it hasn't changed my physique. Like I've still hold on to my lean muscle, uh, which is which is great because that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, my performance is uh, because of COVID. It's just been on a break. So I've, been, I've taken a year break off my sport, and uh, that's exactly what my body needed too. So um, it's just being on that journey, and me transitioning into plant based eating was so easy because I was already controlling my eating lifestyle. You know, focusing on nutrition. Uh, as opposed to anyone that wants to try it straight away, it will be a, a bit of a struggle. But um, being, like you said, a manly man, uh, the popular conception that I used to have was like having a barbecue with friends and a couple of beers and just, yeah, just chatting and just a, a bunch of guys being guys. And it's changed. Now it's just like, if I ever have that, I'll be eating a salad and I don't even drink as much anymore. I'll completely change that. So it's just... Uh, a, a whole lifestyle change for, for me, just focusing on my uh, plant-based, my vegan eating uh, from where I was, where I was a borderline carnivore. Uh, I kid you not. I was eating mm. large, large sun. Like Dora said that she was a, a meat eater, but I was like proper. I would consume two kilograms a day. Like my budget oh, for man. eating protein is crazy, you know. Uh, animal protein. So it was just me limiting that less, um, changing that, eating more plants, and then seeing the the plant protein is a viable alternative. And it is. I mean, I would have never considered it mm-hmm. uh, if I didn't know. Like per like per gram, it is. In fact, it's more uh, protein than a big piece of steak. You know, like this beans and nuts. It is so much more dense dense in protein. So that changed my perspective. And um, I'm loving it. Um, my my life's changed uh, the best possible way. What uh, triggered everything was health. Um, of course, environment, um, the, us focusing on climate change is, is paramount, is of key. But what prompted me to really engage in this lifestyle was my health, because I was already on the journey. I was already on the journey of changing my life with better health. And then my friend from Australia messaged me and suggested that I should try eating more plants. And then I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, I'm trying out to change my life to the best health I can. So after three days, I was hooked. I was like, this is the feeling I'm getting from these plants. It's like, it's amazing. So <laughs> if you can think about it, it's like me shifting from petrol. And now I'm on renewable energy, particularly solar energy. So I feel amazing. Like wow. it's just a life on plants. It just made me uh, everything. It changed my mind, my mood, like you said. Roshni said about how animals, I used to be a guy that uh, for my sport would be aggressive to a level and I'm very mellow nowadays, like uh, very chill. So I could see why you know, the stereotypical hippies are so chill because they eat so much <laughs> food. So. That's right. <laughs> and I'm they do more hippie. than that. And everyone's like, what's happening? <laughs> That's not I think they have a little bit more help in the, in the plant. <laughs> In yeah, the plant uh, area, so, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, honestly, um, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. What about the um, response to the the masculinity uh, yes. kind of psychology that sits around eating meat? How would you have you redefined what masculine means through this process? Uh, for a typical Papua New Guinean man, definitely, because our like our mindset here is like. The more meat, the, the the bigger your belly, the more manly you are. I kid you not. Like in, in our culture, it's like the, the fatter you are, the more power you have. I don't know. It's weird. You know, like if you have this big protruding belly, you're considered more a leader. As opposed to if someone was like slimmer and fit, they'll be like, no, nah, I don't think he's a leader material just based on physical looks. So that's that's really? weird. Like, I kid you not. Legit. I think it's, a, it's, it's a specific are. thing. Yeah, it's a yeah. thing here as well, yeah. It's like big, uh, resembles yeah. wealth. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Resembles wealth. So you big, your wealthier you are, you know? 
It's just yeah. a popular misconception here on this island. Yeah. But now people are changing. They're seeing influences like uh, other influences yeah. in health and eating. And, you know, everyone's seeing this new change in this mindset. And it's just everyone being more awoken, like taking care of their body. They know that it's yeah. it is essential. Like being a man, it's like you being healthy so you can take care of your friends, your family, you know, you just when you're in better health, you're in a, on a, in a better like foundation to do those things where if you're unhealthy by being big and yeah, yeah. Good choices, you know, it's, it's not manly. So being manly is just being able to take care of yourself and your own, you know? So that's probably how I see it as being a man. So that's, that's, that's it. That's, you just nailed it. What about, tell me about your pop-ups. I, I love oh, yeah. seeing them on Instagram, by the way, and I'd encourage everyone to sign up to Devona's Instagram because the food looks amazing. Thank you. Honestly, like it's it's been an amazing journey. Like as being an athlete and transitioning into the culinary world, still still very new to it and learning as we go. But I'm loving I'm loving uh, putting these pop ups. It's making me more uh, being out there and then putting up my work and then people to see it and love it. And it's, it's all vegan food. I try to use that cause it's a niche here. So if I was doing everyone, what everyone else is doing, it'll be, uh, there's people already established. So this gives me a niche to work on and then really uh, push forward my work. And then behind the pop-ups, the message of health resonates. Uh, mm -hmm. that is, that is the foundation of it. And then the fine dining part is just like the dress up to get the message across. And people have been loving it. I've, I've got like five or six that have not converted but have tried it. And they said that it's something for them in the future to try. So that's that's the first step. And I was like, yeah, you know, you know that this exists and you can do it too. I've done it. You can do it too. Mm. So it's, it's powerful that way to use that medium to get the message across and also push my own culinary um, cooking and then impressing people. It's just like I love that. So it's like a win-win for me. So... To mm. see people, no one's done it before. So it's the first of its kind here, and people people have been really gravitating towards it. And now we're improving as we go, and it'll be hopefully a year from now, it'll be bigger than what it is. So we'll oh, take God. it as we go. Fantastic. I mean, I just think that it, it's it's you know the 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 emphasis on on carbohydrate and protein that is yeah. really, I think if you if probably if you dig into it, it's probably got got more to do with marketing from a Western yeah. perspective, then the cultural attribution that it's given, the more vegetables we eat, the better, the more nutritional diversity we have, the better. Yeah. Pacific has, has got an NCD issue. It's clearly within its hands to deal with it. When I listen to all of you speak and look at you all, I mean, you all look absolutely amazing. Roshni's only 27 and she yeah. looks <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> spectacular. <like this. laughs> um, but I, I really, really value all your insights. and. And quickly, if, if I ask you all, first of all, you're giving us all a recipe. Tell us quickly what the recipe is and then give us one hint for how to incorporate more vegetables into your diet, starting with you, Dora. Starting with me. Mm. My recipe is a dessert, okay? And I've, um, I'm going to give you a recipe for grilled mango and coconut mm. tapioca. Tapioca is used in Samoa and Vaisalo. You know, we go crazy for Vaisalo. We love Vaisalo. A lot of people put a lot of sugar in Vaisalo, which is uh, quite unhealthy. I don't do sugar at all and don't mess it. Um, so, yes, the mango, um, it's a recipe that brings out the natural sweetness of mango. And right. um, we're going to share this recipe for you guys to try. Um, Lovely. I also would like to say that a lot of people don't know what it feels to be healthy. Yes. And if you can just give it a try, a lot of people don't know what it feels to be healthy and to feel healthy. And once you get there, you are never going to look back. So, Amen. Yeah. That's, Amen. that's a yeah. really big tip, Dora, is to take that step, feel it, and then stay with how step. you feel. Listen feel to how it. you feel. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. If, I, if I must... If I must give um, my tip, if I had, uh, uh, would be able to give a tip to anybody on how to perhaps try to go plant-based, it would be to plan your meals. Planning your meals is definitely something that you need to do uh, that will keep you on, tra on track of, of eating plant-based. 
Lovely. Thank you so it's much. Huge, I think. Plenty of meals is huge. Yeah, you're welcome. Roshni, what what delicious dish have you cooked up for us? Okay. Uh, well, what is now currently very much in you know a fad called superfood, the moringa. Ah. Sajan in Fiji. So sajan has been a traditional Indian dish for like centuries. And the Indians already knew the value of that superfood called superfood now in the new age language, you can say. So it's moringa with coconut. Very simple and easy to make. Uh, just uh, like stir fry, only five minutes of cooking with grated coconut. And uh, you can eat it as a salad with your tapioca, with your roti, with your rice, whatever. Uh, so, yeah. Now, you, uh, yeah. Um, Roshni, tell me, give me a tip on getting the leaves off the moringa, because I always find that a bit right. difficult. Right. That is a time consuming. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, it is for everyone. So one of the um, um, grandmother's ways of doing it is uh, get all your, um, you know, the little stalks and wrap them in a, a blanket or a thick tablecloth uh, overnight. And the next morning, it just shakes off the leaves. But you still get the, you still, it'll just drop off. But you still got to, you know, take the, um, um, you still have to do a bit of the cleaning, you know, because you'd get right. a bit box with the leaves so but you can shake off the big uh, uh, branch uh, big, big stalks you can say the thicker ones right that's yeah. one way of doing it but I found I found a difference in taste okay yeah it's much more intense when it's mm. done that way overnight and it's fresher a, a little bit of a different taste when it's done fresh off the um, tree so, but okay. the doing it is, um, oh, if only I had one here, I could show it to you. <laughs> it's a little threading. It's like pulling like a, a thread, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you have to. It is a time-consuming um, uh, thing to do, yes. Right. So worth and it, what though, is, isn't it? So it takes me at least an hour to do a dish for two people. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. All right. Anyway, it My is hand. innovative use of a common crop that's also got amazing that's health properties that are that are amazing. understood now. That's right. Yeah. That's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And what is your one tip for um, easy plant-based eating? I think one of the uh, things I've encountered over the years from people I've tried to convert, in inverted commas, <laughs> or people I've had over for uh, a vegetarian meal, is uh, that they think it would be very not tasty and boring. Not tasty, boring. And uh, so I've told, I've like um, used whatever knowledge I have gained over the years and say, you know, and especially from the yogic culture. Now, how can something dead give you energy? Something that's dead, it's a core, it's dead, old. Animals are dead, whereas plants are life-giving and there's different varieties. So what makes meat tasty is the spices, the spices and the way it's done. It's never, whereas vegetables, you can hardly eat, you don't have to even add too much and you can taste the naturalness of all the vegetables. And you can have a lot of raw foods as vegetables and exciting by making it with different sauces or dressing it with lemons. And, you know, um, that's one way of um, making it really tasty. Chilies, uh, lemon, sauces that you can make from nuts. So mm. and You're making me hungry now. <laughs> yes, so vegetables, uh, I think as long as they can be made attractive and tasty, mm. people, people well, We've had people over and they've said, well, if vegetables can be made like this, I can eat them. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's the how it's prepared, the preparation, the excitement. And layering the spices. I find layering. that for me, for me, I, I'm not plant-based, but I've, I've increased the amount of plants I eat and reduced the amount of meat I eat dramatically, dramatically. Okay. And I find the fullness that a, that a meat dish often gives me, I'm 
I'm getting when I when I have nuts. So I've been incorporating nuts in my dishes that's more. Right. Uh, pumpkin right, seeds, that's... cashews, peanuts. It really just gives you that fullness that meat gives you. Debono, what about you? That's What's right. your recipe? Mine is a very easy 20 minute all it takes cooking time to prep a plantain soup. In PNG, we have, as far as I know, 20 different species of cooked bananas. So the savory ones, it's crazy how many species we have. So I use a very specific one, but you can use any savory banana works, easy plantain soup. 20 minutes prep time. Uh, the recipes are there. Uh, you can read it. I forgot, but it's very, it's four recipes. Right. And it's Thank straightforward, you. blended, delicious. And what's your one tip for transitioning? If you if someone does want to go to, down the plant-based path entirely, what's your one tip? My one tip is three days. I call it a three-day hump. Give it three days, and after that, you will see the benefits. It only takes three days. That's how long it took me. Fantastic. Well, okay. listen, thank you all so much. It's just awesome to hear uh, the potential with vegetables because vegetables oh, yeah. have often been on the side of the plate. They've often been that thing that's the afterthought. They're not the the kind of the front and center product. So with your expertise, that is absolutely where they should be, where they can be with your, with your recipes. And with the way, I, I think what I really loved about this is you've all bought the notion of a whole way of life, of a whole belief system and something you feel very positive about. You feel positive within your physiology as well as intellectually, it makes sense for you all. So that's really exciting. And so thanks for giving us a dimensional view towards plant-based eating. And look out for the recipes that'll be coming up with the, uh, with the interview. I want to um, encourage all of our listeners and viewers to think of vegetables as being the first thing you put on the plate and look at the diversity you've got to work off. It's just fantastic. There's no end the potential of vegetable eating. Thanks very much to the Australian and New Zealand governments for supporting Pacific Island Food Revolution. Until we see you again, everyone eat well, be well, and be kind.